Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework, and today we are going to be talking about the work rest situation for the Revolution 2x72 Belt Grinder project. Now, this is a series of videos, and if you're watching this and haven't seen the ones previous, go ahead and click through to the link down in the description so you can follow along with the prototyping, the conceptualization, the design, and ultimately the build of this DIY tilting 2x72 belt grinder. Also, I have plans for sale. If you want to go to my website, housemade.us, you can check that out and buy yourself some plans so you can build this awesome grinder. Now, I am a big proponent of work rests, and I fully believe that without the proper work rest, you can have the best grinder in the whole world, but you can't do your best work unless you have a really good, solid work rest. In this particular case today, I've got a Necessity is the mother of invention type situation. I am working on a nice big hog splitter cleaver. I normally don't do work this like this, but this is a really nice big cleaver that I've been working on and it's a beast to manage. And, and in order for me to get these perfect little grind lines, I'm using this TR Maker sophisticated bevel jig. This bevel jig is fantastic, but without the proper work rest, and it has to be the proper one, it's gotta be long enough, big enough, and straight enough, you're not gonna get really good grind lines. Now, I've already gone ahead and manufactured a really nice 24 inch by six inch work rest that sits in the receiver tube on this particular tooling arm. The way I designed the receiver hitch that holds that actual work rest is so that it can be hot swappable. You can do all kinds of different things without actually creating a whole nother tooling arm. You basically put in a one and a half inch by one and a half inch piece of steel on the bottom of whatever work rest you want and it will accept it right here in this receiver tube. So, take the one out that we've got in the plan set <clears throat> and we put this big bad boy in, set it down in there and you can lock it into place, slide it in, and it works great. I do have a 10 inch contact wheel that I would like to be able to use vertically and horizontally. So I wanna create a versatile work rest for it so that I can turn the thing on its side and utilize all of that nice uh, contact wheel space, but also have a work rest that will work along with it. So that's what we're gonna to build today, right here on Housework. So I really think the first step to doing this is actually going to be taking this all apart, putting the contact wheel on, and just seeing where everything needs to be and making some marks. I'm going to actually use this particular piece to make this happen and, uh, and then go ahead and make another flat one for, for this particular purpose. Uh, this one's got some dings and stuff in it that I think can be notched out and uh, where the plasma torch was and such. So this is a good work piece to start with. So what I'm doing here is I'm marking where the center of this wheel is going to hit this work rest and then I'm going to use that as my template to mark here which looks like right where I've got my existing mark from yesterday where I was looking at it and if I cut that section out when I flip this over and put it in here I can slide this up and it should work out just fine, just like that. But now the challenge will be when we turn this vertically, I want a notch. I want to be able to turn this this way and put a notch here so that I can suck it right up and in. I think that's I think I'll need to make this one a little bit wider. And that will give us everything we need. Let's take this over to the bandsaw and make some cuts.
As you saw in the video there, I was trying my hand at some hollow grind. I've actually never done that before, so this is my first time doing a hollow grind. This is just a scrap piece of metal I've been working with to kind of test this whole system out. And you can see the hollow grind actually did pretty good. It's not perfect, but it, with a little bit of practice, I think I could achieve a pretty decent hollow grind with this. So at the last minute there, I made a split decision to go ahead and add a slot for the small wheel attachment. I think that's going to be super useful. I wasn't really sure if I was able to get that all in this one piece of steel. It's not perfect. You know, it's got its own little quirks and things. I think I might shorten the tooling arm just a little bit so I can get some more depth on this particular notch here but everything else went really well. And I think that having this type of versatile work rest is really going to change how I use this grinder. What I'm going to do is dump this into SketchUp and actually draw it up and include it in the plan set. If anyone has already purchased them, I will send you an email with the additional download link so you can get this and have it cut or cut it yourself. Also, if you buy it in the future, it will be included. So. If you uh, go to the website housemade.us and you want to build this grinder, I will include the versatile workrest in those plans. As always, there are links down in the description where you can find everything that's in my workshop. If you'd like to know more about it, it's all categorized down and easy to find in my Amazon store. That's a free way to support my channel. Now, if you want to take your support to the next level, I do have a Patreon page now. For as little as $1 a month, you can support everything I've got going on right here in my workshop. Also, just below this video, there's a link to my Teespring store and you can purchase cool housework merch like a hoodie or or a t-shirt. I truly appreciate you watching guys. Thank you so much. As always, my name is Brian House and this has been Housework.